All right, folks, today I want to do the second video in the Martial Mistakes series, and today it's about the floating foot and leaning. This is something that you see very often in beginners, be it in test cutting or in sparring. Yeah, I know, the background doesn't look very impressive from this angle. It's what I got, what can you do? So what you often see when people throw a cut is something like this. The rear foot lifting off a little bit, extreme case, would be this sort of thing. Just to clarify, I'm not talking about a rigid static stance. You're not supposed to grow roots. Especially in sparring, you will of course generally be stepping while striking. And although it's technically biomechanically best to connect right at the moment when both feet are planted, a bit of deviation is not going to be a big deal. It only becomes a problem when the weight shifts excessively and you become unbalanced during the cut. So there are two main problems with this. One, it messes with your balance, your stance, and your footwork. The basic stance should be relatively wide, with both feet firmly planted, weight distribution about 50-50, equal between the two feet. This depends a little bit on which sword you're fighting with and which style you're practicing, etc. And of course, during sparring, you can at, at any time, you can shift the weight back and forth if needed. But the basic stance should be 50-50 because that gives you most mobility. Because this way you can quickly move back and forth with, with advancing and retreating steps. You can do triangle steps quickly. You can do passing steps all of that. If you have more weight on one leg as opposed to the other, say, for example, I'm, I'm putting most of my weight on the front leg like this and almost nothing on the rear leg. If I want to now take a passing step with my right leg, I have to return to a neutral position first and then step, as opposed to 50-50 weight distribution where I can immediately switch depending on what I need. And obviously this means that you have a solid platform. You're less likely to be knocked off balance, fall over, trip, etc. All of this. The other important thing here is that you have the structural integrity needed to actually transmit force to the target. Because a proper sword cut, just like in unarmed martial arts, starts from the legs. And just like in boxing, a punch starts at the foot, you know, pushing through the ground. The kinetic chain travels through the leg, through the hips, into the shoulder and the arm, and then you, you've got all this rotation for an effective punch. The same is happening here. Also, the cut starts in the legs and, and the kinetic chain travels through, and this way you put a lot more body weight behind the cut. It makes it that much more effective, uh, not just in terms of damage potential, if you will, but also it makes it much harder to defend against because there's just that much more mass behind the attack. Of course, there are some unarmed martial arts with stances that put less weight on the front leg or even lift the front leg off the ground entirely to be able to deliver quick kicks. And there are also some stances uh, in, in Chinese martial arts, for example, that are meant for training purposes. So you, you actually train your balance as not supposed to be used all the time or at all in actual fighting with, with a resisting opponent. But take that with a grain of salt. I don't have a lot of experience in on martial arts. This is just how it's done in sword fighting. That's all I can tell you. Well, European sword fighting. The second problem has to do with exposing yourself. Not indecent exposure like a nip slip or anything, but exposing your head to the opponent's blade in particular. And this generally happens when going for lower target. So if this is my opponent right here, and this is the leg, and I want to cut to the leg, what a lot of people do in the beginning is they realize if they, if they stand upright, they can't really reach that target. You know, I can reach the, the body just fine here, no problem, but I can't reach the lower target from here. So what a lot of people do is just lean forward to get it like this. And you can see the problem here. The head is very much exposed. A better way of doing that is to maintain a mostly upright posture 
and lowering the stance. So instead of leaning forward to reach it, I'm just gonna drop down and now I can reach it just fine. That also allows me to defend more quickly afterwards. So uh, that's what I can do here. I have very little space to work with. So when stepping in for a leg cut, the bad way to do this would be to just lean forward, overextend, expose yourself, and then it's a lot harder to quickly raise up to guard afterwards. However, if I do this by dropping down, I can very easily raise up the sword without even changing the stance. And then after defending, I can return to an upright stance. One of the reasons why it's tempting to fall into a less stable stance in the beginning is it's a lot easier. You know, the more upright you stand, the, the less energy it takes. You know, if you stand completely upright, just relax, yeah, that's fine. Stepping out a little further, not quite as comfortable. Sinking down more, you have to engage more and more of the muscles as opposed to just resting on your bones, basically. So a very firm stance, firm, deep stance that gives you a lot of stability. Do you have to engage the, the leg muscles the entire time? So this is a lot more exhausting, but it's needed to fight effectively. And by the way, leaning can actually be done properly. If you still have that solid stance, you can hip hinge forward or back and you can still maintain a pretty even stance. Of course, not entirely 50-50. It's going to shift a little bit, but you can try to keep it as even as possible. And in order to, for example, say your opponent moved just a little bit out of reach and all you need is just a little bit of a lean to get to them. Some of the historical manuals show them, so that may be viable. Or if they cut at you and all you need really is just, just lean back a little bit to just be out of reach and then be able to come in quickly for the counter. But still, this relies on, on the legs having a solid platform as opposed to lifting off. And of course, good structure is also very important when cutting with sharp blades, arguably even more so because now it's a safety issue. If your stance is off and, and you're, you're kind of wobbling or you're, you're more likely to trip and fall onto your blade, possibly, of course, that can go terribly wrong. So it's always important to make sure that the feet are firmly planted. Anyway, just something to keep mindful of. Again, this takes a lot of practice. You can never work too much on your stance and footwork. Like, this, this is something that always can use some improvement. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this helpful or entertaining or otherwise beneficial. Thanks for watching. Check out the links in the description down below and have a good one, folks.